excited to present our research project to you titled, Will a Canine Cause You to Do Time? I'm Bladen Bates. And I'm Gracie Hicks. I'm Sam Kohler. I'm Sarah Madden. I'm Rayana Primitt. And I'm Anya Stewart. So I'm going to cover a little bit of the basics of juror decision making. So due process, which is outlined in the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, prohibits the government from depriving an individual of their rights without following certain procedures first. One of these procedures is the right to a trial by a fair and impartial jury. Jurors are charged with the responsibility of determining whether a um, excuse me, defendant is guilty or not guilty based on the evidence presented at trial and not irrelevant characteristics of the people involved. These characteristics are referred to as extra legal factors and they can alter court-related outcomes. Some examples are gender, demeanor, race, and socioeconomic status. And the Constitution, which um, provi provides protections for defendants, but it doesn't provide any protections for victims who are really susceptible to the negative consequences of the legal process. Despite the fact that the Constitution doesn't protect victims, courts realize this and allow accommodations for vulnerable witnesses. The legal system can cause victims to be re-traumatized. They can re-experience past traumas by being exposed to stressful environments. It's important that the victims who are most susceptible to emotional harm have accommodations, especially children and individuals with mental disabilities. Many cases involving child abuse never go to trial as children are often too stressed, anxious, or otherwise unable to provide effective testimony. This can silence them. The use of provisions allows them to share their stories. Provisions have included having a support person, holding the doll, or pre-recording testimony. We will focus on the use of facility dolls. While the use of facility dolls began with children, Washington versus Die extended the use of facility dogs to all adults who may need them. Facility dogs are expertly trained animals that can assist an anxious or traumatized individual to communicate the facts that he or she experienced or witnessed. The pr presence of a facility dog can help reduce stress and anxiety. They are present in many settings, including forensic interviews, medical exams, therapy sessions, and legal proceedings. We'll focus on the use of facility dogs in the courtroom. <coughs> the use of facility dogs has been a major topic in the legal field. The defense argues that the visual appeal of dogs might cause juries to perceive witnesses as more vulnerable, likable, or sympathetic, and that they may bias the jury against them making them receive harsher punishments. The defense also argues that their Sixth Amendment right to confront their accuser is violated. There are numerous arguments in legal papers challenging the presence of facility dogs, and they are typically mentioned upon appeal. While there is controversy, empirical research has found no effects of facility dogs on verdicts. So though previous research suggests that the presence of a facility dog does not affect jurors, there has been research that has investigated the effects of gender, including the gender of defendants, victims, judges, um, has very consistent findings. So we will only be focusing on the impact of victim gender in courtrooms because our research is focused on facility dogs, which accompany victims during testimony. So overall, research suggests that jurors give longer and harsher sentences to defendants when the victim is female as opposed to when the victim is male. And a potential reason for this is that jurors tend to view female victims more favorably than male victims. And in general, females are viewed as more vulnerable than males, and people tend to help females more than males. And now it's time to talk about the present study. The purpose of the current study was to investigate whether the presence of a facility dog would impact mock jurors' judgments as a function of victim gender. We conducted a two-by-two two factorial design in which we manipulated the presence of a facility dog, the dog either accompanied the victims or not, and victim gender, male and female. We manipulated the presence of a facility dog through pictures, judges' instructions to jurors, and frequent mentions of our victims reaching down and petting the sweet dogs. In terms of our hypothesis, we predicted a no-man effect of facility dog. We predicted
predicted that the presence of the facility dog alone would not impact mock jurors' judgments of the victim, the defendant, and of the overall verdict of the case based off previous research. We hypothesized a main effect of victim gender such that we predicted that females vic female victims would be viewed more favorably and in turn, jurors would be more punitive towards the defendant. Based off both of these, we predicted an interaction between the presence of the facility dog and victim gender. We predicted that the presence of the facility dog would continue to have no effect when the victim was female, but when the dog accompanied a male victim, we predicted that this would affect jurors' judgments of his credibility and therefore the defendant's culpability. We collected 84 participants to add to last year's participants, totaling 201 overall participants. Our participants included various community members across the state. 52% of our participants were female and 82% were white, and the mean age was 44 years old. Each of our participants received one of our four versions of our mock trial case, and each of our versions remained identical to each other, except for the presence of a facility dog and victim gender. Participants read our mock trial case, which depicted a 21-year-old victim who was violently assaulted in their own home. The victim was severely injured, resulting in broken ribs, as well as other different injuries. The participants read judge's instructions, um, judge's instructions, witness testimonies, including cross-examinations, opening statements from attorneys, closing statements from attorneys, as well as the judge's closing statements. Participants then completed a 28-item questionnaire, which included the following. Questions that were about the victim. For example, on a scale of 1 to 10, how believable is the victim? Questions that were about the defendant. For example, on a scale of 1 to 9, overall, how sure are you that the, the defendant is the person who committed the assault? We also included demographic questions as well as manipulation checks in our questionnaire. So what did we find in our study? Well, we first <coughs> analyzed the participant's view of the defendant's culpability based on the three charges. And what we found here is that our independent variables had no significant effect on the percentage of guilty verdict. And we also found that around 35% of participants <coughs> viewed the defendant as guilty. So taking a look at our first independent variable, uh, facility dogs, we found no significant effects on how the defendant was viewed, but we found two significant effects on how the victim was viewed, which was victim credibility and something towards the victim. And what we found is that when the dog was present, uh, participants viewed the victim as more credible, but yet they were less sympathetic towards the victim. And then continuing on with our second independent variable, victim gender, we found four significant effects on how the victim was viewed, which was victim vulnerability, empathy towards the victim, simply towards the victim, and victim honesty. And what we found here is that when the victim was female, participants viewed the victim as more vulnerable, they were more empathetic, and they were more sympathetic, and they viewed the victim as more honest than when the victim was male. And continuing on with the effects of victim gender, we found one significant effect on how the defendant was viewed, which was on defendant likability. And what we found here is that when the victim was female, participants viewed the defendant as less likable. And we also found no significant interactions in our study. And although this is not something that our original study was guided towards and not something that we manipulated, we found interesting implications about participant and mock jury gender in the literature and decided to look more into it. And what we found, and we found some significant findings here as well. So for female mock jurors, we found some effects for victim gender. And what we found is that female mock jurors found the defendant less likable when the victim was female. They were also more sympathetic and they were more empathetic when the victim was female than when the victim was male. And for male mock jurors, we found one significant finding for the presence of dog, and we found that male mock jurors were less sympathetic when the dog was present, regardless of victim gender. So overall, the presence of the facility dog and the gender of the victim had some effects towards assessments of the victim, but had little to no effects on assessments towards the defendant. Contrary to our first hypothesis, the presence of the facility dog affected mock jurors' judgments on some of the assessments of the victim. Specifically, the victim was seen as more credible when the dog was present um, with the victim, and the mock jurors had less sympathy toward the victim. 
when the facility dog was present. So this tells us that even though the victim was seen as slightly more believable, that didn't necessarily lead to the victim to increase feelings of sympathy or sorrow toward the victim. Um, even more importantly, we found that even though we found some effects towards judgments of the victim, this didn't lead to harsher judgments toward the defendant, which is the concern, the overall concern of the legal system. As for our second hypothesis about victim gender, we found significant findings in the expected direction that female victims were judged more favorably than male victims. These align with societal beliefs about gender stereotypes that males are typically seen as being able to defend themselves and that females are easily pictured as being victims. We found no predicted interaction effects on any of our dependent variables. Across various studies, and now including this one, the presence of facility dogs appear to have no effect on the jury, and they do not favor a victim when considering victim age, victim gender, or the reported crime. Here's also a couple of implications in which our study can be applied. Um, Oh, there's growing empirical evidence that the silly dogs do not unfairly sway a jury, and because of this, appeals that are based off of this reason should continue to be denied, and so this is good news for the prosecution. There's also growing empirical evidence that victim gender matters, and therefore mock juror gender also matters and is just as important. Now we're just gonna look at some directions for future research. So previous literature has shown that gender of all involved in the courtroom, such as witnesses, the defendant, and even the judge um, affect jury decisions. And so our study only varied the gender of the victim. So to be able to more um, fully explore this variable, future juror decision-making studies would have to, or should vary the gender of several key players within the courtroom, and this would be done through a larger factorial design. Um, and another important avenue for future research would be to examine whether the judge um, tends to rule more favorably for the prosecution if the victim is accompanied by a facility dog during their testimony. We acknowledge Dr. McQuiston for her support and guidance throughout this research process. Um, we also acknowledge the psychology department for providing us with funds um, to give our participants a chance to win an Amazon gift card, and we would like to acknowledge our participants for taking the time to do our study. All right, so, <laughs> so here's what we learned. You can't expect grown adults to follow simple directions. Um, some participants take their participation duties very seriously. Research requires a lot of time, patience, preparation, and attention to detail. Never go to the Spartanburg Public Library to collect, collect data. Don't do it. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? So, according to your data, most of the participants viewed the defendant as not guilty. Do you think that fewer participants viewing the defendant as guilty may have affected? participant perceptions of the victim and the influence of the facility dog? Um, I believe that some, like, according to, like, the verdict that uh, our, as stated during our method sections, the evidence was not definite against the defendant, so there was ability for participants to sway, to sway either way when thinking not guilty or guilty for the defendant. Yes. Okay. I think I saw this that, that in the uh, female versus male, females were less likable, but people were more sympathetic. <coughs> oh, so the so what it was, it was asking how the participants viewed the defendant when the victim was either gender, and so it's that uh, the participants viewed the defendant as less likable when the victim was female. Yes. Was it, um, was it, it was the same kind of dog in all the cases, or was there any variation there? Yes, it was one very sweet um, yellow lab in all the cases, in all the pictures depicted. It was just the victim with or without the sweet little yellow lab. Yes. I believe y'all said that in the, at the end that judges might view uh, victims less favorably. More favor. More favor. Okay.
Dr. Lefay, did you have a question? <clears throat> Sure. I thought you. Thought you <laughs> I was going to hold it, but oh, you called me out. Okay. So um, no, but coming back to that question that was just asked back here, I mean, if you look at the people who did find the defendant guilty, was there like could you do a, an analysis of people who saw guilt versus not guilt, and if any of these variables sort of showed a difference? They didn't. There you go. Yeah. See, that's why I withdrew my question. I knew. It was. <laughs> <laughs>